All right, we have everything loaded up here in Lightroom. You see my five images there that I did um, exposure um, with. I'm going through them here. You can see all the different exposures from darkest to brightest. And what I'm gonna do is merge those together here in Lightroom. Go up to the menu there, go down to Photo Merge, click on HDR. When you do that, it's going to bring them up and show you um, what it would look like. So keep auto aligned and auto settings, leave the create stack and click on merge. It'll take a few seconds for this. It all depends on how many images you are using. Uh, we have five here, so usually about half a minute. Uh, depends on your system, how fast you're computer or laptop I'm using a MacBook Pro Air here uh, so it's almost loaded up then uh, we're gonna see this final image it's going to group it all together there uh, so we can go down here and we can look at them all uh, open them up and you'll be able to see the original five and then the one with it merged the HDR merged so we're going to work on editing the merged, all right? So click on that image, go over here. First thing we're going to do, it already had done an auto adjust. Now that's the merge, but we want to make sure that we have the Adobe color. Uh, the temp is a little off for me. I want it a little bit warmer. See, that's a little too warm. Uh, we can go back down here. You can see that it can be cooler, but I want to keep the blues in the sky, but I want the oranges and the yellows to really pop. So we're going to put a little magenta into it. It's a little on the green side. Uh, adjust this to your preference, all right? I always like to adjust it, then go back and look later. Uh, the exposure is pretty good there. Now we'll leave that alone, the highlights, the whites, the blacks, everything like that. Then we're going to go down here. First thing I usually do is remove chromatic aberration. All right, that gets rid of any of the chromatic aberration in your image. Do that first. Uh, I have the enable profile corrections clicked for the lens I was using. It did pretty good. Um, vignetting on it is okay i'm gonna leave it right there in the middle i think it did a pretty good job maybe i'll raise it up a little the corners are still a little dark but let's leave that for now all right um aspect and uh scale here i might scale it in a little i'm gonna leave it alone right now we'll do that towards the end I want to see how my focus in the front of the image and the back of the image is. If it's a little uh, out of focus up front because being so close to the lens, I'll adjust that later. All right. So let's go up here to the top of your menu there. Color grading. Uh, I usually do a little color grading. Shadows, I like to add a little blue. That's way too much. Uh, we'll get it just a tad around the more of the darker blue, mid blues, right there. Highlights. Um, I go in there for sunsets, usually a little on the warmer side. I don't mess with the midtones very much at all, so we're not going to bother that today. Then we're going to go up to our HSL, our highlight, saturation, and luminous. Uh, you can use this pin pointer and click on the color you want and slide up and down with your mouse and it adjusts what it thinks that color is, which is the oranges and yellows. Uh, so we're going to adjust that here, fine tune it. Don't take too much. I don't like to do too much saturation. Uh, vibrance usually is better than saturation, but for individual colors, I'll go in there adjust it a little there's not much reds in the photo 
but here's the blues. We want to keep the blues in the sky without getting rid of the oranges and adjust the aqua some. Uh, the yellow for the hue, a little too yellow for me. Um, see, it changes there. We're going to put it a little bit more on the orange side and then the orange more on the reddish side. Pull those reds out of the sky there. And that red will move a little bit. See, I always mess with the adjusters here to see what it looks like extreme both ways and adjust from there. So I brought that down to the red a little bit more and really pull those reds out. Now magenta, there's a little magenta in that sky. Just a little there, so I'm going to raise that up just to make it pop a little bit more up in those clouds. All right, um, purples, not much purple in there, uh, but there is a tad, so we're going to try to bring it out a little bit more. And that's what it looks like with it on and off, on, off, on, and off. All right, so you can see the difference there. All right. I want to go back up here, and that's what it looked like originally and so far. Okay, so you can always check that by clicking on the eye icon up top. All right, now let's get into some more local editing. I'm going to go up here to my brush, and uh, you see the brush is right there. I want to add some whites, a little bit of exposure. I know you can't see it happening right now, but this is just repetitive repetitiveness for me. Excuse me. And uh, so I usually start out with these. So um, you can always adjust these later. So I'll go in here with my brush, make it a little bit smaller, and focus more on these rocks. Uh, brush that in there. You're going to see it lighten up a little bit. Okay, we're starting to get rid of some of the shadows in the rocks. Not too much, though. We want it to make it look natural. Uh, so let's get in there. We'll have to make a little bit smaller to get that top rock. There we go. And we will adjust that. Get those rocks right there by the water without getting into the reflection in the water too much. We don't want to lighten that up anymore. All right, now you can adjust your sliders. See, you can see the difference there. I think that's good there. Let's get some whites, more whites. Whites is better than exposure. Exposure will bring up um, all of the shadows, the darks, and the highlights. So let's not use exposure too much. Use the individual highlights, shadows, and whites there, and the blacks. All right, so we got that adjusted. Add a little contrast here. Uh, blacks are pretty good. See, that's raised up. We don't like that. That looks artificial. So let's add a little bit more whites and exposure just a tad on those rocks. We can always come back and adjust this later. All right, so it's all per personal preference. Okay, let's add another brush. Go and go in here. Uh, texture and clarity. I use a little bit of clarity when I do local adjustments. I try not to go above 20 on that. Usually around the 10 to 15 range. And I'll brush that in. Uh, so right there. We'll make that brush a little bit bigger. And we'll get that right in there. And up top there. Okay. Uh, more over on the left hand side there get these rocks a little bit more clarity on them adds that texture and highlights to it a little bit more uh, you can see what it looks like if I adjust it so let's bring that down a little and add a little texture see down below it's really soft uh, we don't want soft we want just a tad of texture okay we don't want them smooth we want nice sharp uh, the D haze. Uh, I'm going to bring the D haze out a little bit. Gets rid of any of that haze on the rocks. Makes it more defined. And we'll add a little bit of sharpness here. 
not too much but there we go all right here we have our uh, adjustments for our darks here we go play with the curve a little bit see we can move that point from the corner up we want to i'm going to slide it over a little bit more in the darks there make a point get my shadows make another point my highlights just a little bright up there we don't want that we want a nice even nice little s there that works good in those rocks um we brought out the highlights the shadows but kept our darks really good so uh, everything looks good there all right i think that's uh good okay so you can see where i brushed it on and i can add more by clicking on that and adding more as you can see it's putting that effect on more of the rocks i didn't like that darkness on the sides so i got that adjusted a little bit more added more on the brush all right so sky uh, really pretty sky not too much to do on this sky uh, there are some dark spots still in those clouds uh, so we'll create a we're going to do a linear gradient not on a brush right there uh, start our point i started it over on the left normally i started in the middle i don't know why i did that but that way you can see it there so that red area is the part that you're going to adjust so you can drag this around you can adjust it and get it where you want i don't want it in the water too much but i want it to go over the mountains there the dark shadows of the mountains all right so we'll go in here we'll first adjust our temp on that let's make it a little bit a little bit right i think right there we're going to do a little bit on the warmer side maybe check that out a little too warm well add just a little we'll go with nine uh we'll add a little magenta in it there is magenta in there so let's uh just a tad to even that out get rid of the greenish tint to it highlights let's get some of those highlights down look at your histogram up here we have our darks on the left and highlights on the right we don't want that peaking too much my darks are peaking a little bit my highlights are good uh, so i can add a little white into this uh, you see i kind of peaked there the red kicked up let's drop that down a little now we're good Okay, you can always click on that, and it shows you where it is peaking. All right. Uh, let's go down here to our curve. And you can raise that up. That's our darks, our blacks. I think that's good, but I want to put a point here and lower that. Another point up on my highlights. Raise it up. Get a little bit more. Towards the mid-tones a little brighter in the shadows. A little bit right there. I think that's good. Uh, my clouds look good, not too dark. Good contrast to them. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to get out of our local adjustments. And let's view before, after, right now. So that's first and now. So that's the difference between our adjustments. All right, we got next. Um, clicked on that. That's shown we were where we are uh, peaking in the blacks. So I'm going to change that a little bit. I don't want to get rid of too much of the blacks everywhere else. I think that's good. I'll undo that. Let's go back here. Uh, see where I'm peeking. I think we're going to do more of a local adjustment. So let's go back to our brush. And uh, click on brush there. Go down to our blacks and shadows. We'll raise shadows up a little first. And we'll brush that in there you don't see it changing too much 
but it is a little i want to make it in nice even flow so i'll go in there and move the blacks after i do the shadows and that looks pretty good let's see you're about right there not too bad you can always come back and adjust these later. I think we're going to go the other way with the shadows. You know, let's check it out right there. We got a negative three on the shadows, 34 on the blacks there. Let's uh, go with that. All right. I'm not peeking anymore. I'm not peeking on the highlights. Maybe a little bit on the blacks just a tad bit somewhere uh, we can change the amount but we're not going to mess with that so let's go ahead and go up here uh, to our let's do some settings there let's zoom in here um dust spots always look for dust spots <sighs> always like to keep my sensors clean uh change changing the lens out especially when you're out in the field uh, so check for dust spots. You can go in. I don't see any, so I don't have to get rid of any. So I have a nice clean sensor. All right. Let's go back down here. And let's do some scaling maybe. You know, let's pull that in. Uh, I think I'm going to just scale in a little. The uh, rocks up close there are a little fuzzy. I was at F16 uh, for these shots, which depth of field is really good for that. But the lens was only about maybe 12 inches away from those front rocks. And they're a little out of focus around the edges so let's go ahead and uh, scale that in a little bit then my offset i want to make sure my horizon line is on my remember the rule of thirds i think that looks good draw the viewer's eye through the image and that looks really good there okay so soft proofing i always do this put a nice bright edge around it and see what it would look like a white wall um, in your house or maybe I want to make sure it's not too dark on the edges okay um, zoom in here again double check for any dust spots I do this a few times always check my focus on the mountains back there everything looks good nice good haze nothing that I need to edit remove anything like that so i think we're good uh, let's go back in the brush here on these rocks i don't i want to add a little bit more to that maybe let's see let's add a brush and i'm going to put in a little bit more uh, sharpness on these rocks make them uh, kind of pop put that contrast in a little bit more so small brush here just brush over your rocks the main area not the sides too much but that middle uh, really put that in focus i'm going to go ahead up here on the mountain especially the edge uh, so those trees up there on the horizon between the sky and the dark there uh, pop a little bit more okay so i think we got some good sharp in here uh we can always look there where we added it. Um, so, before, after, before, after. Sorry, that was a little fast. There we go. All right, so let's zoom back out. Now go back to our overall adjustments here, the slider. And so far, that's looking really good. And that's it.